Minecraft 1.16 is right around the corner, bringing changes to the nether that we have been requesting for years. From new biomes, new blocks, and structures, to new mobs, and even a new ore, the nether update is bound to be one of the best we've ever seen. But, could it be even better? My name is System Z, and today we're checking out new ideas to make Minecraft 1.16's nether update even better. By the way, my Minecraft server was recently updated with a new map, new plugins, and more. For more information, click the join button below. Is it even possible to make Minecraft 1.16 better than it already is? Considering all of the features that have already been introduced to the game in this update, is there really anything else that could be added or changed? Trust me, as much as this has been a challenge to pull together a list of ideas to make the game better, it is certainly possible. But of course, I'd like to hear your opinions as well. So before we begin, let me know which ideas are your favorite as well as what you would add or change. That being said, let's get started. In case you missed it, the smithing table was finally given functionality after wading through both the 1.14 update and the 1.15 update, allowing players to create netherite gear by upgrading their diamond tools and armor with an ingot of netherite. Don't get me wrong, this is a great functionality for the smithing table, but it could certainly be used for more, right? Upgrading tools has been a feature that I've requested on countless occasions, specifically asking for the ability to combine existing ores together to produce unique combinations of tools, weapons, and armor for different playstyles. So, our first idea comes with the ability to create gilded armor. Let me explain. Ah yes, the smithing table, most certainly one of the most mysterious blocks leading up to this update. And now we finally have a use for it to simply craft netherite armor. But what if it were more than that? I mean, in the title, it does say upgrade, so we should most certainly be able to upgrade to various different tool sets and armor, as opposed to just by creating netherite. So in this case, you can see that we've got gilded armor. This is only one of the various possibilities of combining different ores together to get very unique sets of armor. Now in this case, we can actually go through and craft it. You can see that we can combine netherite with gold to get gilded netherite armor. Now instead of this just being a part of the progression for the game, this armor wouldn't necessarily be any stronger, but instead would just have a unique perk that other armor, for example, wouldn't have. As you know, Piglin love gold and they will not attack you if you are wearing gold, so perhaps this could be a way to get around having to wear gold armor at all times when around Piglin, but instead you could actually wear a gilded set of armor to avoid that. Like I said, this is just one of the many different examples of gilding different tools together with various different ores. I would love to see this functionality come to the smithing table. And of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now that I've had time to play through the nether update in my 1.16 Let's Play, this next idea is probably one of my favorites. Now that the nether is certainly something nice to look at, I've found myself on several occasions wanting to find a good location to build a mega nether base. Unfortunately, I'm restricted by the reminder that no matter where I choose to build, my nether base will never be synced up with my overworld base portal. Unless, an idea as amazing as this one were to be added into the game. My friends, let me introduce you to the Synchronizer. A new block that allows you to sync two nether portals together. This is probably one of the coolest features that could be added in Minecraft 1.16 due to the fact that it would allow builders to essentially build bases in the nether without having to worry about traveling too far away from their normal nether portal. This would definitely save me a lot of fireworks and elytra usage in my own Let's Play world. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about exactly how this block would work. I imagine the synchronizer being a block that has only gotten through bartering, or essentially crafted using Crying Obsidian, which again is only gotten through bartering. Now this is where it would get a little bit expensive, just like the lodestone where you can place it down and set a compass to use it. In this case, you could actually use a nether star, which again is very expensive. But obviously, for something as amazing as this, I definitely would expect it to be nothing short of expensive. So you could essentially right-click a synchronizer with another star. It would allow you to keep it temporarily until you right-click another, and it would then sync those two portals together, allowing you to easily travel from one destination to the other. 
This is certainly an idea that I would love to see in Minecraft 1.16. If you're anything like me, then you've probably experienced bad luck when it comes to finding a nether fortress in a freshly generated nether world. And for a new player who doesn't have an elytra to easily fly around, they can be even more difficult to find. That's why, for this next idea, I think a new item that does exactly what the Ender Pearl does for the stronghold should be added for finding a nether fortress. Imagine a crimson heart an item crafted by using crimson fungi and perhaps even a new drop from a new nether mob that can be thrown to locate the nearest fortress. This would be an incredibly simple addition to the game, apart from coming up with a new mob that could drop the necessary items for crafting. Which, speaking of, let me know in the comments your ideas for what this mob may look like. And while we're on the subject, another variant of the same item should be added for the end cities in the end. Now that, I'm sure, is an idea that players can get behind. Let's take a moment to talk about the Iron Golem, a mob that in all actuality is pretty unique and original. Apart from sharing a similar nose to villagers and pillagers, yeah. golems aren't really a prominent species throughout the worlds of Minecraft. So, what if alongside the Iron Golem, there was also a Gilded Golem? A nether counterpart to the Iron Golem. My friends, this is the Gilded Golem, a new companion that can be summoned in using nether blocks. Now you would imagine that with something as expensive as nether blocks, this would be a very powerful mob. And as I said, you could summon it in so that you'll have an ultimate form of protection when exploring the nether. This guy would be your ultimate companion to protect you from all of the evils against the nether. Unless you're very unlucky and you find a bastion with a gilded golem already spawned inside. In that case, it's going to be protecting the piglin as opposed to you. This is a very scary but also awesome version of a golem that I would definitely love to see in the game. Plus, it would give us more reasons to use blocks of various ores. I would love to see diamond, gold, of course, netherite forms of the golems. I think the possibilities are endless. Each one could be stronger than the last. That being said, let me know what you think of gilded golems down in the comments below. In Minecraft, when it comes to finding a new companion for your Minecraft world, do you prefer a wolf or a cat as a pet? What about a nether glow bug? The ability to tame a pet in Minecraft is certainly a community favorite, allowing players to not only make the game feel just a bit more personal, bringing their own pets into the game, but also to make it feel less lonely. It's been a while since we've seen the addition of a new pet in Minecraft, so why not introduce one for the nether in Minecraft 1.16? My friends, this is the Glugbug, a very adorable version of a pet found in the nether. As you can see, I'm holding a blaze rod, and this of course was achieved by killing a blaze. And by doing so, you can actually use it on a Glugbug to tame it. Now doing so would essentially allow it to fly around, producing a sphere of light. So that way, no matter where you're at in the nether, even if it is a darker area, you are able to see. I think this is an amazing idea because we really don't have any mobs in the game that do produce light, and I would love to see something in the sorts of a dynamic light, especially by bringing one in the overworld and going caving. Having one of these guys fly around and do so would be amazing. Now perhaps it could also be aggressive if you're attacked and actually use its stinger to perhaps cause mobs to catch on fire. There are various different possibilities that this could be introduced to the game or even another mob. I've had a lot of different suggestions for something similar to a netherhound. I just figured why not go a little bit more unique. Now I do have to say a huge shout out to Energized who did create this, or Energy as I like to call him. This was his original idea and as always he helps me with a ton of assets for my videos. That being said, huge shout out to Energy. But let me know what you think of the Glugbug. The 1.13 aquatic update was an absolutely monumental update for the game, adding the ability to place stairs, slabs, fence posts, and more into water and have it properly connect to a system called water logging. You can probably see where I'm going with this. That's right, lava logging. Changing the way lava functions and flows to adapt to nearby blocks. Now I'm certainly not the first to mention this idea, in fact, Mumbo Jumbo himself tweeted the idea about a month ago. So this is certainly a popularly requested feature for the nether update. 
Obviously, its main benefits would come from building, being able to use all of the new nether blocks to create really cool flowing lava tanks, or even custom terrain to make your nether base even better. Not to mention how soul sand and magma blocks could behave in lava, acting similar to when used in water. There are many ways the lava could be updated to be made just a little bit more interesting than what it currently is. Last but certainly not least, potentially one of the most overlooked features for the Minecraft 1.16 Nether update, more potions. You would think that with the focus of the Nether being primarily towards introducing the player to brewing, that more potions would have been added to the game. Perhaps Magma Walker for walking on lava, or even brewing a Crimson Fungi into a potion that allows you to easily see in lava. There are countless potions that could be introduced with this update, not to mention updates to brewing in general. I've made countless videos before talking about this exact subject, mainly about using an infernal bamboo item to create new types of potions altogether. So definitely make sure to check them out if you are more interested in that. I've got a bunch of different videos all about the nether update that I'm sure you will enjoy. That being said, let me know in the comments down below what types of potions you would like added to the game. That's going to be it for today's video. What do you think? Is it possible to make the Nether update even better than it already is? Which of these ideas are your favorites? And what idea that wasn't mentioned in this video would you add to Minecraft? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing and turning on notifications to be alerted whenever I next upload a video. Would you believe that 70% of the people watching this very video are not currently subscribed? In case you didn't know, you are able to subscribe to not only support your favorite content creator, but also stay up to date with their videos. Also, you can help me reach 500,000 subscribers. That being said, that's going to do it for today's video. My name has been System Z. You guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.